Do you know what I just did to you? Do you have any guesses? No. You keep up with like new calibers coming out or anything? No. Have you heard of 30 Super Carry? No. Good morning, everyone. Today on TFB TV, a review of the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus uh, 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 and 30 Super Carry. Yeah, I've already done a video on the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus in 9mm, and I've already done a video on 30 Super Carry, but this is technically the first gun that I've reviewed in 30 Super Carry. So instead of going over a complete review of the Shield Plus, going over a complete review of the 30 Super Carry, when you're done here, if you want more details, you can go check out those older videos on TFB TV. Better yet, I've been chatting with Ian McCollum about the 30 Super Carry, and he published a well-researched and in-depth look at this cartridge on forgotten weapons. So head over there after you're done with this video, or I guess you may as well just go over there now because his videos are so much better than the straight up dog shit I make for TFB TV. Main takeaway here, 30 Super Carry Smith & Wesson Shield Plus is identical to the 9mm except for a couple of minor features we'll discuss. The dimensions, identical. The weight, this one's actually 7 tenths of an ounce lighter than the 9mm version, but it holds a staggering 14 rounds, that's 13 plus 1 with a flush fit magazine, or 17 rounds of 30 Super Carry with this slightly extended magazine. That's an extra three rounds over the nine millimeter version in a very tiny pistol. Obviously, to get to this type of capacity increase without changing anything else about the gun, there's going to be a compromise. In essence, you're talking about roughly a 15% decrease in power versus the nine millimeter version, but in exchange for a 30% increase in capacity. Many of you will think that's a fair trade, but that all depends on your ballistic beliefs, your reloading religion, your terminal theology, your hollow point persuasion, you get it. According to the FBI's current terminal ballistic guidance, 12 to 18 inches of ballistic gel penetration is ideal. In the FBI's words, penetration is the most important factor to terminal ballistic performance. The second most important factor temporary and permanent wound cavity. In other words, expansion. We're gonna talk about both of those things briefly because I already covered them in detail in the last 30 Super Carry video. 30 Super Carry was introduced in 100 grain and 115 grain weights. 100 grains, that's like the size of the heaviest 380 generally, while 115 grains, it's like the size of the lightest common nine millimeter grain generally. Right now, the fastest 30 Super Carry round is Federal 100 grain HST, which will punch out 1,250 feet per second. Now, there are some 380 rounds that will reach 1,250 feet per second, but only in 90 grain versions out of a four inch barrel. So on average, you're getting 10% or more energy than 380 from the 30 Super Carry. Only the best personal defense 380 rounds will consistently penetrate 12 inches of ballistic gel and still have good expansion per FBI guidance. So you can imagine that the additional energy that 30 Super Carry generates over 380 means 30 Super Carry will, at least according to Federal, reliably penetrate 12 to 15 inches of gel with good expansion. If you want to call 380 the bare minimum, 30 Super, next step up. By comparison, the 124 grain plus P Federal HST will hit 1200 feet per second plus from a Glock 19, almost as fast as 30 Super Carry, but a full 24 grains heavier, not to mention HST 9 millimeter will reliably penetrate 16 to 18 inches of ballistic gel and expand to double its size while delivering 15 to 20% more energy. For 9mm HST, absolute madman, but most high-end personal defense 9mm will probably outperform most 30 Super Carry. So looking purely at FBI standards for penetration, the 30 Super Carry is adequate, penetrating 12 to 15 inches of gel if Federal's data is true, plus you get that extra 30% of capacity, and that's really the big draw that makes it sound good on paper. To get the additional capacity, you get a smaller bullet diameter. 30 Super Carry is thinner than 9mm and it just kind of feels a little funny to hold a round of Super Carry in your hands when you've been shooting 9mm for decades. It's just 
like thinner. It's weird. 9 millimeter and 380 are 0.355 inches in diameter. 30 super carry, 0.312 inches in diameter. Coincidentally, the same diameter as 762.39 from the AK-47. Federal claims 0.5 inches to 0.6 inches in expansion from 30 super carry, while some 9 millimeter and even some 380 rounds will expand anywhere between 0.6 and 0.8. Does it make a huge difference? I don't know. The FBI says that a medical examiner cannot distinguish the difference between wounds caused by 0.35 to 0.45 caliber projectiles. But what about 0.31 caliber projectiles? I don't know. In summary, 30 super carry, more powerful than 380, less powerful than 9mm, but 30% more capacity than both. Sounds good to me, but make your own conclusions from that. Oh yeah, let's talk about price. Federal owns the means of production here. They're pumping 30 super carry hard and cheap, and I will not take the obvious pun there. Federal says MSRP for 30 super carry will be $30 for a box of 50 MSRP, or about 60 cents per round. That's almost double the cost of 9mm, but it is about the same as 380 or 40 SW, so relatively not bad. What about recoil? 9mm generates 35,000 PSI, while 30 Super Carry generates 50,000 PSI, the same as the FN 5.7 round. That doesn't mean that 30 has more recoil. In fact, the FN 5.7 round is much lighter recoiling than 9mm, despite being higher pressure. There are a bunch of factors at play there, so the only way to test it, in my mind, you just take one gun in 9mm, the same gun in 30 Super Carry, ideally in a blind scenario with experienced shooters who don't know what they're shooting at all. Brilliant idea, I know, because I came up with it. We did that at Gretna Gun. We had this gun in 9mm, this gun in 30 Super Carry. We got about a half dozen shooters who had no idea what they were shooting, what caliber, nothing. They had literally no idea that we were testing 30 Super Carry. Some of them didn't even know what 30 Super Carry was. Have you heard of 30 Super Carry? No. You know that there's a new caliber. Gotcha. Do you know what oh, I'm referring fuck. to? <laughs> yeah. What do you... Ultra Carry? Or is it, was it? Super Carry? Super Carry? Yes, you just shot 30 Super Carry. So we got the Shield Plus in 9mm shooting Federal 115 grain. We got the Shield Plus in 30 Super Carry shooting 100 grain Federal. Which one did the shooters prefer? So we're gonna play a little game. We're here at Gretna Gun. I've got, I don't even know which one's which, here we go. I have the M&P Shield Plus in 30 Super Carry and I've got the M&P Shield Plus in 9mm. I told everyone upstairs that they're going to be shooting the exact same gun, just with different ammo, which is true. So we're gonna grab people one by one, bring them down here, have them shoot one right next to the other, see if they can tell the difference and what they say. As we call him, Tiny Joe. Here's what we have. We have two identical guns using two different kinds of ammo. Two different types of ammo from the same manufacturer. You just know that the ammo is different. There's nothing cute here. It isn't like one of them, you're not shooting proof loads or anything. I wanna know what you think about the recoil impulse between the two. You're probably not going to be able to tell the difference, but I want you to at least try. If you can't tell the difference, say you can't tell the difference. If you can, tell me. Don't study them. Don't like look at markings or anything. Just pick it up, fire. They're hot. You don't need to charge them. They're ready to go. And there's five rounds in each. Gotcha. You shoot them fast, shoot them slow. I don't give a shit. What do you think? Second one seems a little hotter. Interesting, okay. Well, they're both Shield Pluses, right? Smith right. & Wesson Shield Pluses. The first one is nine millimeter. The second one is 30 Super Carry. So, have you shot a th uh, 30 no. Super Carry? Now no. you have, yeah. now you have. I mean, was it much different? No, was it, no, it wasn't a big time difference, but I can if just you tell had it was to, a Yeah, hotter. yeah, yeah. May I introduce to you the lovely Ryan Murphy, the gun bunny of Gretna Gun, just pick them up and shoot. Just shoot, got it.
Tex, what did you think? Could you tell the difference? Um, there wasn't a major difference. That might have been a little bit smoother. Interesting. The one with the uh, the orange sights on it. Yes. It might have been. I don't know. Now, Ryan, if you had to guess, because you know we're up to something here, what do you think that we just did to you? Tricked me. Well, one just felt smoother than the other. The didn't first puke, one did. didn't puke back as much either when I was shooting it. Didn't feel as um. Well, look. Yeah. You're no goddamn Sherlock Holmes, but you are handsome. That's the important thing. Uh, that was 30 super carry. Oh, wow. That's why I had a different recoil impulse. Correct. The exact same ammo. Just, I mean, not the exact same ammo, right? One's nine, one, but the same brand. Like, right. they're both federal. It and, wasn't and you, as sharp as a recoil. It felt much smoother and better, easier follow-up shots as well. Sharper, but flatter tracking. Um, and that was, of course, that ammo was kind of hot. But, I mean, that felt like nine in a small gun. And this felt like something a little snappier, but the sight uh, picture was flatter. Did, did you have like a, like, would you have a preference, like a, a strong preference one way or another? No, I mean, I'd shoot it. If somebody told you that you got two more rounds I would, this, I would do 30 super carry if it was the same price as nine. Yeah. Like, this is like to catch a predator. Feels like, have a seat. Yeah. yeah. Have a seat. <laughs> If they're chambered, they're hot, just pick them up, and when you're ready. That one honestly felt a little hotter than that one. Okay, okay, that's three people who have said that. Yeah. Theoretically, would, would you take three additional rounds in a carry gun with this, which you just shot, um, if it were maybe 10, 15% weaker than this, or no? Yeah, I would, I'd take more. I think most people would, Yeah, but. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Lord Rhys Esquire of the ye old Gretna Gun Works. Rhys, here's the deal. That one was a little bit smoother. Smoother? What do you mean by smoother? Funny. It's so, more pleasurable. And what did you think about that one? Standard. It's pretty standard for any. Yeah. This one, the one that you like better, was 30 Super Carry. And for what it's worth, that's a 13 round magazine. This is nine millimeter. That's a 10 round magazine. So you get three additional rounds. Similar performance, 30 super carry is slightly weaker. As you can see, it's a toss up. Half the shooters that we tested said 30 super carry was snappier. Half of them said that it was smoother. So again, toss up. Personally, I can't tell the difference and I consider myself to be a pretty damn experienced pistol shooter. And I'm sorry that I've shown this clip like three times on TFD TV already, but Ian McCollum and I became Eskimo bros on the same Shield Plus and 30 super carry at SHOT Show this year. And neither he nor I could tell the difference. Thanks for tuning in to another video on TFB TV. <laughs> what do we think? I cannot tell any discernible difference in felt recoil. Between 9 and Between 30. Nine and 30. Um, with the exception that I get two more rounds in this than I do in that. Yeah, which is kind of cool. I mean, that's really the selling point. It sounds promising. The more I hear about 30 Super Carry, the more I like it. Let's get to the actual gun review. I'm not going to rehash it in full detail because I already published an in-depth review of this gun March last year, but I can give you a brief summary of that review and I can tell you about the minor differences between the 30 Super Carry and the 9mm versions of the Shield Plus, other than the caliber obviously, because there are minor differences. The Shield Plus is a fantastic pistol. Smith & Wesson's been making the Shield series for 10 years now. They've been making the M&P series since 2005. It's a trusted, reliable platform. The first version shield launched in 2012. It was a single stack compact 9mm, but in March of last year, they released the Shield Plus. The Smith & Wesson Shield Plus is a double stack micro compact handgun, which I define as a gun that's 
roughly an inch thick, roughly 10 rounds or more with an overall height of around four inches. In terms of guns in this category, Everything's pretty evenly matched from a size standpoint, but more about that in just a moment. Let's get into the differences between the 30 Super Carry and the Shield Plus in 9mm. The big one is that 30 Super Carry is going to come optic ready with Shield RMSC pattern, like the Shield RMSC or Holosun 407 pattern, which is just effing perfect. 9mm is getting this feature also, finally. Waiting for an optic ready M&P and a common footprint was like waiting for Matrix Revolutions, except not shitty. I was really worried that they were going to use plates like the full size M&P, so I'm very happy that they went this route, just giving it a native footprint and the most popular footprint out there. So 17 rounds in a pocket gun with a 407 or 507, and you're going to be one step in razor. Relatedly. The night sights on my 9mm are traditional 3-dot white outline night sights. The 30 Super Carry version is going to have the orange outline front night sight and a blacked out rear with two tritium vials. This is very tolerant, very progressive of Smith & Wesson to do. All the shooters that use this gun in our test much preferred this setup from the 30 Super Carry. Not the sight picture was better on that. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, that, that, um, I agree with that. It's the first thing I noticed was yeah, the, yeah. You know, the, the iron sights popped out a little bit better. Now you also get your pick of traditional three dot or this new configuration, the orange front pattern on nine millimeter also. So that's coming for both guns. Next, for some reason, the 30 Super Carry version is seven tenths of an ounce lighter than the nine millimeter version. I asked Smith for comment on this and they said it's probably just due to maybe the contour of the barrel and the changes to the barrel lockup. In any event, great. The lighter's great when you're carrying less great when you're shooting. Next, in my review of the Shield Plus and 9mm, I said it probably had the best out of the box micro compact trigger, and that's still true. My 9mm copy has a trigger pull weight of almost exactly four and three quarter pounds, and it was like that out of the box. Now, while both guns have the exact same trigger, exact same trigger pull, for some reason, the 30 Super Carry version has a trigger pull weight of about six pounds. The trigger stroke, still the same. Everything else feels the same. There's just a little bit more weight at the end of the trigger stroke here. Some of you are gonna hate that because you probably liked the lighter trigger like me, while some of you are going to say that anything under five pounds is probably too light for a carry gun. So your mileage may vary here. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I prefer the lighter trigger, but many of you may prefer this five to six pounder. Next difference, the frame's got a slightly different finish that's closer to the original kind of matte shield rough plastic finish. The nine millimeter shield plus at least originally came with a black Cerakote finish over the frame that actually looked really cool like a Darth Vader vibe, deep dark black color. I, I think that either one is fine. Also related to aesthetics, I'm not a big fan of the larger roll mark on the 30 Super Carry version. It's a little bit billboardy for me compared to the original, cleaner, traditional M&P roll mark from the 9mm version. I bet Smith & Wesson's going to say that this was added to give the slide a little bit more traction up front. I'm personally not a big fan of the let's make a giant roll mark in lieu of better slide serrations argument, but again, this is a minor level hop tier nitpick. So while I'm in a bitchy mood, let's get to the negatives about this gun. Obviously, some of you are going to bitch about the round being both weaker and more expensive than 9mm, both valid concerns, but the question you have to ask yourself is first, do I care about ballistics if this round meets or exceeds FBI standards? And second, why am I so goddamn self-loathing that my life isn't worth an extra few bucks a box? No, I'm kidding. I mean, obviously, ammo prices are important for all of us, so it's something you've got to take into consideration. Second, while it's a very light gun at 17 and a half ounces, empty and with no magazine, the Shield Plus is slightly heavier and slightly larger than the competing SIG P365 and the Springfield Hellcat. Both good guns in their own right. The P365, dry, no mag, 16 and a half ounces, or an ounce less than the Shield Plus, while the Hellcat is right at about 16 ounces. So there are marginal differences in size and weight, as you can see from the camera angles here. The Hellcat also gives you 12 total rounds of 9mm versus 14 rounds of 30 Super Carry in the Shield Plus. And the Hellcat also has an accessory rail unlike the Shield, although a poll of 400 random TFBTV viewers 
indicates that a little bit less than 40% of you actually use dust cover mounted accessories in your carry guns. The Shield, the Hellcat OSP, and the P365 are all about $600 MSRP as well, except the P365 is not optics ready at that price. They're all pretty great, so you can't go wrong. In conclusion, what's my verdict on the Shield Plus and 30 Super Carry? It's cautious, but extreme optimism. The only caution I have is over the performance of the 30 Super Carry round versus 9mm, simply because the only real data we have right now is from Federal at this point, the people who are making the ammo. So I'm looking forward to more independent testing before I can say that I really trust this round. Ignoring the caliber for now, the newer Shield Plus and 30 Super Carry is just the already great Shield Plus 9mm with nothing but improvements. Although the updated roll mark and what appears to be maybe a slightly heavier trigger will get mixed reactions. That said, it's 7 tenths of an ounce lighter than the 9mm version. It's ready to accept the most popular micro-compact optic platform without a plate. It's got better night sights. There's not really much more that you need to say because the Shield Plus is already fantastic. And by the way, the optics readiness and the new sights, those are coming to the Shield Plus and 9mm anyway. You also have the advantage of an already deep micro-compact accessory and holster market that's perhaps second only to Glock or the P365. That includes, again, getting to use the holsters that have been made for the Shield for a decade now. Yes, most, if not all holsters for the OG single stack Shield will work with the Shield Plus. That's it for my review of the Shield Plus and 30 Super Carry. If you want to pick up one of these guns, I highly recommend going to Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. I've known Tom and Michelle, the owners, for over 15 years. They give away four guns a month to our Utreon and Subscribestar supporters. We randomly select four members at the $5 level or higher, and you get a free gun from Top Gun Supply every month. That's four of you. Interesting point, I've been seeing people scalping 30 Super Carry, which is kind of weird. Like, why would you scalp around for a gun that nobody has yet? I don't know, but I've been seeing people selling like the regular target ammo for a dollar a round when it should be like 60 cents a round. If you want to get 30 Super Carry at non-scalper prices, I highly recommend you check out our sponsor, Ventura Munitions. They've always been great to us. They've always been great to you guys, but again, Make sure you go check out Ian McCollum's video when you're done with this one. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching. Take care, guys.